For those of you watching, chances are you're a computer geek like me. And a topic I've always loved since hearing about it is virtualization, which is essentially running an operating system within an operating system. This is great for casual and professional PC enthusiasts alike. On the casual side, it gives people a chance to test out other operating systems without the drawback of overriding your current one. For professionals, they can set up virtual computer environments for the sake of testing and a consequence free space before deploying to the real world. Either way, there's a whole lot that can be done with virtualization. And on today's episode, I'll show you how you can set up your own virtual machine lab for free here on East Coast Tech. What's going on guys? Andrew here and today we're going to set up a virtual machine test environment. This can be done on almost any PC, but you will need a processor capable of virtualization. I recommend at least four cores a decently sized hard drive or SSD, and I recommend at least 8 gigs of RAM. These are pretty modest specs that I feel most people would be able to acquire. Onto the software you'll need, first is VMware Player. I just did a Google search for VMware Player and downloaded version 12.5 for Windows. Note here that it can also run on Linux distros. The next piece of software you'll need is ESXi. VMware is going to make you create an account for this one, but they do give you a free 60-day trial. Don't worry about keeping track of all the links, I will have them down in the description. You'll need the companion application, vSphere, for use with ESXi. And the last bit of software you'll need is another operating system to run. For convenience, I choose Ubuntu Server, since it's free as well. As kind of a breakdown of what I'll be doing, I'm going to use VMware Player and create a virtual machine of ESXi. ESXi is a simple operating system whose sole purpose is to host virtual machines. So within the virtual machine of ESXi, I'll install Ubuntu Server. So in, in essence, I'll be nesting one virtual machine inside of another. It's like Inception, but for VM. Now, I never actually tried this before, but from what I've heard from colleagues, it can be done. So let's see if we can make it work. Luckily for me, I already have all the programs installed, so we'll start with VMware Player. Select Create a New Virtual Machine, then select Installer Disk Image. This is where we'll load ESXi and click Next. Change the save location and the VM name as you see fit, then click Next again. VMware recommends 40 gigs of data storage, but seeing as we're going to load other virtual machines here, we should probably have more. I'll do 120 gigs for our purposes today. Before we sign off on the machine, let's customize the virtual hardware. First slot is memory, I've got 32 gigs in my rig, so now nah, let's do 16, why not? We can, always, always, we can always adjust these things later. On the processors, go ahead and select as many as your computer has. The VM is only going to use as much CPU resources as it needs, so it's not an all or nothing kind of game. Once that's taken care of, select finish and the VM should automatically boot. Now we can see ESXi installing itself to the VM. This may take some time, so We'll just come back to it once it's finished. Just work your way through the prompts, nothing on to worry about. Right, and we're back. And we've rebooted the VM. Last thing we need is the IP address so we can manage the host. Now it's time to run vSphere. Under IP address, put in the IP address of the ESXi host. The default username is root, and the password was made up when we installed ESXi. You can ignore the warning about the certificate and check the bottom of the box to avoid further warnings about it. From within vSphere, we can now set up our virtual machine. This time, click Ubuntu Server, click New Virtual Machine. I'll tick off Custom so we can see all the available options. Click Next and give the new VM a name. For storage, it should auto-detect the virtual hard drive we created in VMware Player. Under Virtual Machine Version, select version 8, since we're using the freebie versions of VMware, we're not going to have access to all the necessary tools to take advantage of the later versions. This won't really affect our performance, so it's okay for now. Under Guest Operating System, select the best option for the OS you'll be installing. For our case, Ubuntu Linux 64-bit is just right. Under CPUs, um, I'm not sure how sockets versus core counts affect performance, but traditionally servers have about two sockets. 
Therefore, I'll go with that configuration. I'll give the VM 8 gigs of RAM just to avoid application bottlenecks. Um, you can leave network alone for now along with SCSI controller. Now we get to create a hard disk with in a hard disk. <laughs> 20 gigs for Ubuntu would be perfect, but I may end up keeping this VM, so I'll give it 40 gigs just in case. You can leave advanced options alone, which brings us to the last page. Check the box to edit the virtual machine before completion, just to give it a once over. Now give vSphere some time to finish creating the VM. When it's done, you'll see it appear in the left panel. Select the VM and then power it on. You need to be in the console to actually see what's going on. Yep, now we're pixie booting. Uh, we should probably load an ISO. Click the little CD icon above the console, load the ISO file, and then while we're in the console, press Control alt insert uh, It usually would be a delete at the end, but vSphere uses insert as to not conflict with the outlying operating system. Now we can install Ubuntu server, and I'll come back when it's all done. Now we see Ubuntu is installed on the ESXi VM, that in turn is also a VM. Note here that Ubuntu Server does not actually come with a graphical interface, so I'll go get one real quick. This also might take a while, so I'll be back again. With a proper user interface in hand, we now have succeeded in running one VM within another VM. And we could add even more, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I know for most users, they'd probably just like to try out some Linux distros or maybe even Windows Server, but for those who really like to get their hands dirty and more advanced server environments, this is definitely a cheaper alternative to going out and buying a whole bunch of server hardware. I know this video was definitely not for the faint of heart, there was definitely you know, hundreds of things that could have gone wrong, but luckily I was fairly able to demonstrate how to create a virtual lab environment for virtual machines. Give this video a like if you liked it, get subscribed to my channel for some more awesome PC tutorials and tech reviews. This was Andrew with East Coast Tech, and I'll see you next time.